lot of my clients wanted to invest in emerging markets, as did I, but did not want to participate in some of the human rights atrocities and just the bad governance in some of these emerging market countries. So by freedom waiting, um, we can still take part in the growth in emerging markets with a freer country sense. My name is Perth Toll. I am the founder of Life and Liberty Indexes. We run the world's first uh, freedom-weighted emerging markets index and uh, ETF. I grew up in both China and the United States, and after college, I went back and lived in Hong Kong and traveled throughout China to Beijing and Shanghai. And there, I realized the difference that freedom made in my life and also in the markets in these various places. There's three classifications for international stocks, developed market, frontier market, and emerging market in the middle. Countries that you might think of as emerging markets are China, Russia, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, and these are some of the, the less free ones. There's also the freer ones like Taiwan, South Korea, Chile, Poland. So most emerging markets indexes are market capitalization weighted. As a result, most have about 40% weight to China alone which is a huge concentration risk. So freedom weighting is an alternative method of weighting the emerging markets so that the freer countries get a higher weight, the less free countries get a lower weight, and the worst human rights offenders are excluded altogether. When investing, avoid having a home country bias. So the reason why you don't wanna have a home country bias, which is very natural to do, and most people do this, you miss out on growth opportunities in other parts of the world. Don't limit yourself to uh, the stocks at home, but think of the world um, as you invest as well. Coming from a financial advisor background, I know that women tend to like to work with women financial advisors. Maybe not in every case, but as long as there's a diversity of thought, and you know, women bring that because we are less represented currently in the industry. I see it as more of an opportunity. And with all of the developments uh, of COVID um, and working remotely, I think this actually opens up a lot more opportunities for women to be more involved in the field. Invest according to your hopes, not according to your fears. So one thing that I like to tell people as they're starting out is it's better to invest in what you believe in. Some people invest because they're afraid they'll run out of money. That's not a right reason to invest. Invest because you know that by allocating assets, you have the power to make an impact on the world. So investing doesn't have to be, you know, a quantitative, complicated process. It can, it can be a science, but it can also be an art as well. And for me, investing is both a way to grow money, but also a way to express my beliefs and what I hope to see in the world. And I think, you know, now with the proliferation of thematic ETFs, these types of ETFs are, are just people looking around in the world and seeing what's going on and investing accordingly. Don't overcomplicate your investments. Nowadays, there's so many investment options available for investors who just want to keep it simple and keep it low maintenance. So the simpler your portfolio, the more likely you are to be able to stick with it in the long run. One thing that I find really gratifying is how investors have responded to this product. Finally, there's a way to invest in emerging markets without autocracies, or there's a way to reward the countries that promote human freedoms. I'm, I'm really thankful for the way that investors have responded to this, have invested with us, and have sent me notes of encouragement along the way.